just want to praise you forever and ever and ever. Come on, church. I just, just, just want to praise you. Anybody want to praise him this forever. morning? Forever. And ever. And ever. And ever. For all. For all. You done. You done for me. Somebody ought to sing blessings. Blessings and glory. And honor. And honor. They all. They all. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Hallelujah. the Lord our hands up for praise. Amen. We welcome you into worship Amen. this morning. Hallelujah. We Zoom this morning and Facebook. We thank God for your joining in with Quint Chapel Amen. AME Church thank here you, in the Lord. great city of Louisville, Kentucky. Yes. We're excited about what God is going to do today. Amen. Amen. Are you Amen. ready for a blessing? Yes. Anybody yes. ready for a blessing today? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Go ahead and type the chat. Amen yes. in the chat. And we thank God for your joining in with us this morning. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tenants of wickedness. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. Lord, I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. For the Lord is in his holy temple, and let all the earth keep silence before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And all together, O, o sing unto the Lord a new song, for, for he has done, done marvelous things. things. Make, Make a, a joyful, joyful noise unto the Lord. Lord. All, All the, the earth, earth sing praises. praises. Amen. As we continue in our worship experience this morning, we now join with us as we have our opening hymn, hymn 394 in our hymn books. We are often tossed and driven on the restless sea of time. Come on, somebody ought to know as we lift up these, this great hymn of the church to God's glory and to his honor. By the restless sea of time, summer skies and holly tempest all succeed a brighter shine. In the land of perfect day, when the mist have rolled away, we will understand it better by and by. Come on, church, anybody gonna understand it? By and by, when the morning comes, all the same. God and gathering home, we will tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Because we're often dusted too of the things that life demands. What about food and water, shelter, thirsty lands and fuzzy lands? We are trusting in the Lord and according to his word. Come on, church. We will understand it better by and by. Come on, church. I'm singing by and by when the morning comes. All the saints, all the saints of God are gathering home. We will tell story how we overcome and we'll understand it better by and by temptations hidden snares often take us unaware and our hearts are made to bleed for a thoughtless word or deed and we wonder why the test when we try to do our best and we'll understand it better by and by. Come on, worshipers, we're 
We are by and by, and by when the, the morning comes. All the saints, all the saints of God are gathered at home. We will tell the story of how we overcome. And we'll understand it better by and by. One more time without the music. By and by, when the morning comes, all the saints of God are gathered at home. Tell the story how we overcome, and we'll understand it better by and by. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. If you know God will understand it, we'll understand it better by and by. We yes. thank God for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a privilege to be able to come to God in prayer. The Bible says that we ought to pray and not to faint. Let us seek his most holy face this morning. Father, we come to you as humbly as we know how. Oh God, we have not come for form or fashion today, but God, we have come to give you glory and honor. We have come to acknowledge you, oh God, for you are our Lord, you are our God, you are our Savior, our healer, our deliverer, our way maker, our bridge. God, you are everything to us. And God, as we come on this glorious day, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Oh God, we thank you because you woke us up to see this day. God, as undeserving as we are, we thank you, Lord, because Lamentations tells us that your mercies are new every morning. God, we thank you as we cash on in on those new morning mercies. God, we say thank you, Lord. God, even though it's the first time that we have seen this day and the last time we'll see it, God, you already knew over 2,000 years ago. Oh, God, you knew, God, that we would come to this time. Oh, God, as we come, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. God, you have already prepared everything that we need in this day and in this hour. And God, as we come, we ask that you would forgive us of all of our sins. God, we pray that if we have sinned against you in any way, we pray, God, that you would blot out all of our transgressions, purge our hearts, our minds, our hands, our feet, Oh, God, search us, and if you find anything not like yourself in us, God, please remove it. Father, we invite and invoke your presence today. For God, we realize that no preaching will get done except you come. Oh, God, no singing, no praying will go forth except you send your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, we pray that you would give us your unction and your power, God. Oh, Father, we thank you, Lord, as we invite you to come into this worship experience. God, even though we're here in this sanctuary, there are those out there who are in their living rooms, their dining rooms, in their automobiles, but wherever they are, wherever we are, God, send your spirit, send your power, send your joy, send your anointing, God. Father, we thank you for our pastor, presiding elder Troy Thomas, and God, we pray that you would pour your spirit out upon him and anoint him afresh. Oh, God, give him a salvific word, a word that will go forth and penetrate uh, these cold hearts of ours. And oh, God, even if we're already saved, God, challenge us, convict us, oh, God. Change our hearts and our minds, oh, God. Oh, God, help us, Lord, to look to you. God, bless as the word goes forth this day. And God, if there's anybody who does not know you in the pardon of their sins, God, we pray that you would save today, heal today, deliver, set somebody free today. God, have your way, have your way, have your way in the service, oh Lord. Oh God, bless us and we shall be blessed. Father, we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Let the friends of God say amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen.
nobody told me the road would be easy and I don't believe he brought me this far to leave me And amen. We thank God uh, for that fervent prayer this morning. And also we thank God that God certainly is in the midst of all things. Amen. Amen. We glorify God this morning as we prepare our hearts and minds for the altar call this morning. We know that we all have been going through some challenges, some ups and some downs. We have faced some hills that have been hard to climb. But how many know the Lord is still on our side? Uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of the death, the scripture reminds us, but I will fear no evil. Let us continue to be in prayer. So much is going on in our country. So much is going on in our city. So much is going on in our world. But we have to stand firm in faith and in prayer. Amen. The Bible reminds us that any among you are sick, call upon the elders of the church and to let them pray the prayers of faith for healing there's much healing needed in the land. Amen. And so as we open up the altar, where you are there in Zoom, amen, kneel in your heart, amen, uh, whatever your need is, call it out to God, and we know the Lord can hear your despairing cry. Let's look to the Lord now in prayer. Father, we come now in Jesus' name to honor and bless you, to glorify you, to lift you up, to exalt your name, to thank you that you're still on the throne, to bless you because you're still God all by yourself, and to worship you, oh God, because you're worthy of all the praises. God, as we humble ourselves before your presence and where we are individually and collectively as a body of believers, we're standing in the need of a miracle. We're standing in the need of a breakthrough. We're standing in the need of God that you come by and see about the needs of your people. Oh God, we call on your name tonight, oh, I mean this morning, God, and ask God that you would be in our midst. Oh God, come on Holy Spirit, show up. Move from from heart to heart and breast to breast. Uh, oh God, come on and show up. Uh, oh God, because we need you every hour, God. Uh, we stretch our hands to thee, oh God. No other help do we know. Uh, and so Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, somebody is calling out your name. Uh, somebody needs a miracle in their circumstances. Uh, somebody is going through some challenges uh, and only you can fix it, God. Uh, come on, King Jesus, and fix it. Uh, work it out, God, on our behalf. Uh, somebody is praying praying, God, that you might do it, God. Somebody is going to the hospital. Somebody is waiting on a doctor's report, and only you can fix it, God. Somebody needs miracle money, oh God. They don't need a breakthrough. They need a miracle in their finances. Come on, God, and fix it. Somebody needs a change in their life. Somebody has been going through the humdrum things of life, and oh God, step in right now. Give them a new vision. Give them a new excitement. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we stand in the gap uh, for those that can't pray for themselves. Uh, we stand in the gap and ask, God, uh, you might bless in a mighty way. Uh, we stand, God, and ask uh, your miracle-working power in the 
name of Jesus. Come on, God, and do it. We thank you now, God, for the many blessings. Oh, God, we thank you. Open it up the windows of heaven and pour down your blessings. We're going to shout now. We're not going to wait till the battle is over. But, God, we're going to give you all the glory. We're going to give you all the honor. God, we thank you for making a way out of no way. And we honor you, God, this morning in our prayers, oh God, that you might see about our needs and your name might be glorified. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Come on, let the friends of God say amen. Somebody ought to say amen again. Put your holy hands together. Give God a hand clap of praise. If you know he's answering your prayer this day to his glory and to his honor, somebody ought to say amen. Amen, amen. Good morning and welcome to Quinn Chapel African Methodist Episcopal Church in Louisville, Kentucky. I bring you greetings from our pastor, presiding elder, Troy I. Thomas, and our first lady and assistant pastor, the Reverend Dr. Maxine Thomas. All of us here at Quinn, officers and members, we greet you. Maybe this is your first time zooming in on our service or you have zoomed in before. We are just delighted that you chose Quinn Chapel to worship with. As we continue through the service, at any time, if you want to join our family, please go to our chat room and let us know. We will be more than delighted to greet you there. We are a church that is not perfect, but we are striving for perfection. Have a great Sunday. Thank you. We are excited about prayer meeting and Bible study on Wednesday at 6 p.m. where our pastor, Presiding Elder Troy I. Thomas and the Reverend Dr. Maxine Thomas will lead in our wonderful Bible study. Join us on Zoom and be blessed. Quinn Chapel AME Church will have its quarterly conference via Zoom with our distinguished presiding elder, Troy I. Thomas of the Louisville District on Thursday, April 22nd at 6 p.m. See you there. Thank you so much for being a blessing to the ministry of Quinn Chapel. Please use your mailing envelopes to send your donation, your offering to Quinn Chapel's address, or you may use Cash App, dollar sign Quinn Louisville. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
Somebody ought to say amen, amen, amen. We thank God that God is an awesome God. It just reminds us through his power and his presence that there's some things that may appear to be impossible, but certainly with God, all things are possible. Somebody ought to say amen. We thank God, we thank God for his grace and his mercy, amen. To the Reverend Dr. Maxine Thomas, uh, to our ministerial staff members who have joined with us in worship this morning via Zoom, uh, to Elder Dwayne, amen. Thank you for your musical gifts and talents gracing us this day, amen. And to the Quinn Chapel family and visitors and friends who decided to join in with us in Zoom this morning, we greet you all in the joy of Jesus, for truly it's his joy that woke us up this morning started us on our way that we might come and worship the God of our salvation. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we encourage your attention uh, to our lectionary text this morning from the book of Acts chapter number three, and we'll be focusing there. Um, the pericope runs from verse 11 down to 19. But we're going to just focus on two verses, verses 11 and verse 12 of Acts chapter 3. Amen. Reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible. Amen. And when you have found it, you can say amen. Amen. And so we're going to consider God's word for the edification of the body of Christ all assembled. Now, as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John. All the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why did you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk. God's word for the people of God. Somebody ought to say thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. 
Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come before your presence, O oh God, acknowledging where we all have fallen short of your glory by thought, word, and deed. And pray now, God, that you would be in our midst, O oh God. Hide me now behind the cross and allow the true preacher to come forth as your word now goes forth with power and with excellence to accomplish that which you so desire this day. Save a soul, add to the church daily, O oh God. Remind us of your healing power, O oh God. Be glorified in this preaching moment. And then we thank you, God, for your blessings thereof. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Come on, let the friends of God say amen and amen, amen. We're grateful this morning that we thank God that God is always in the midst of everything, amen. And because God is in the midst of everything, we are reminded here in the book of Acts, chapter number three, amen, as the writers unfold a familiar story to most of us. So a lot of us have heard uh, the sermon that has been preached time and time again about the lame man, amen, after the power of Pentecost had taken place, uh, that we find the disciples beginning to scatter. And as they were ministering there in Jerusalem, as they were ministering and, and sharing uh, the good news of Jesus Christ. We find Peter and John was going about their business, amen, in the earlier part of chapter number three. And the Bible reminds us as they were going into the temple, uh, uh, they saw a lame man. Y'all know the story. It was a lame man sitting on the side begging for alms. Uh, uh, they realized they didn't have uh, financial means. They didn't have money to give uh, to the beggar man, the lame man who was there. Uh, uh, but what they offered to him was Christ. Uh, and they reminds us in the scripture that he said, silver and gold I don't have, but such that I have, I give unto you. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Y'all know the miracle that had taken place, the miracle, the man gets up and he begins to leap and he begins to shout. He begins to rejoice because God had performed a miracle. He didn't know what was going on even in his own circumstances, but in the midst of that, huh, he goes into the temple and starts leaping and shouting and rejoicing and the the people were amazed as who is this man? Uh, didn't we just see him outside? Uh, I'm here to remind somebody uh, that every now and then God will show folk uh, uh, with a miracle that he has performed in your life. Uh, and folk won't understand uh, how God has brought you a mighty long way. Uh, is there anybody here that can get excited today to know that some things in your life, uh, you didn't know how God was going to work it out. Uh, you were that beggar man. You were that lame person uh, that was sitting on the side of the road uh, that was sitting outside the church uh, that was sitting on Broadway uh, uh, that found yourself there on Jefferson. Uh, you weren't in interested in going into the church uh, but you reached out your hand for some help uh, and God heard your despairing cry. Uh, sent somebody by uh, to lift you up out of your circumstance. Uh, I'm here to remind somebody uh, every now and then uh, you'll find yourself down and trodden uh, down and out. Uh, despair on every side. You don't know which way is up. Can I get a witness here? Every now and then, God has to stop by and perform a miracle in your life. I'm here to encourage somebody. Don't give up hope. Hold on to what God can do for you. Somebody ought to say amen. Amen, amen, amen. We find, we find this man, this lame man, uh, us there at the beautiful gate, uh, and he was filled with wonder. The folk were amazed at what took place. Uh, they couldn't understand how could this be the beggar? How could this be the man that was right outside? How could this be the man that asked me for a few pennies? How could this be the man that asked me for a chicken sandwich? How could this be the man holding up a sign? I'm just a veteran and I'm out of work. How could this be the same man said I'm homeless and I'm I'm trying to feed my family. How could this be the same man? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, every now and then, God will place you in a position that he can elevate you to a new level. Somebody ought to say amen. Let us focus there on the text. Look what the Bible reminds us. Uh, the Bible reminds us here that uh, as, after this man is rejoicing, uh, after the man is sharing the good news, uh, after he is now leaping and, and joyful, amen, uh, the Bible says that the lame man uh, who was healed uh, held on to Peter and to John. Uh, the Bible says the lame man, uh, after he was healed, uh, after he had rejoiced, uh, after he saw a new working, awakening, uh, after he got to a new position, uh, 
he began to hold on to Peter and John. I'm here to remind you, sometimes when God does something miraculous in your life, you better make sure you hold on. You got to hold on to what has helped you. You got to hold on to that change in your life. You got to hold on to the things that you know God provided for you. Is there anybody here to know I'm just holding on? That's why sometimes when I find a spiritual mentor, when I find somebody that can help me get better understanding, somebody that can help me with my challenges, help me with my mental state, help me where I am right now. I got to hold on. I keep calling them up. I keep texting them. I want them to know that I trust you. I believe in you. The man held on. He didn't let Peter and John go. He wanted them to know I am a new person and you lifted me up and because you lifted me up I can give God the glory. Somebody ought to say amen. He held on. He held on. The Bible says he held on to Peter and John and then all the people, all the people ran together to them to the porch on the outside called Solomon's porch. Amen. And they were greatly amazed. Catch, catch it, catch it. The folk that was on the inside got up from their moment of prayer, stopped praying, and ran to Peter and John. Come on, somebody. They were not interested in what was going on in that had interrupted their prayer meeting. They were more interested of the miracle that had been performed on the outside. Y'all better come with me because I'm running fast. All the folk were not concerned about needing a prayer get it through. They saw a prayer walking in front of them. They saw a prayer being answered. They saw a miracle leaping in front of them. And they said, let's get in a hurry. Anybody here know you not want you got to hold on to the miracle. Secondly, you got to get in a hurry to find your way. Anybody here know that you got to run and grab somebody with you? Get in a hurry. Find out the source. Find out the miracle. Make sure that you're tied up. Make sure that you're tangled up. Make sure that you're in the number. Is there anybody here that want to get in the number? Get in a hurry. Get up off of your knees. Stop reading the things that are not helping you. Go to the power source. Go to the work. Go do it in Jesus' name. Somebody ought to say amen. Hallelujah. Look at the Bible. The Bible says when Peter saw it, Peter. Y'all know Peter. Peter's impetuous. Peter is impatient. Peter is, 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 is quick thinking. Peter, y'all know Peter. Peter's the same one that denied Jesus not too long before at the cross. This is the same Peter that thought he was big enough and bad enough as a disciple to walk on the water but got scared. This is Peter. Now I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. We've already experienced Acts chapter 2 by the time we get to this text. Uh, and Acts chapter 2, the day of Pentecost was fully come. Uh, and they were all on one accord in one place. And the power of the Holy Spirit fell upon them. Uh, and as they fell upon them, it empowered them uh, to go forward. Amen. And the Bible says, uh, so when Peter saw it, what did he see? What did he see? He saw it and he responded uh, to the people. I'm going to stop right there. Uh, when Peter saw it, uh, what did he see, preacher? Help me, somebody. I don't see what he saw. I don't see what he saw. I'm trying to help you. Oh, what he saw was the people who had been praying, who had been calling God during the prayer hour and trusting in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that were making their petitions known to God. They got up and started running and they ran together to the outside. Understand they were on the inside and what Peter saw was he saw a response to the people who did not understand and I'm here to remind you, uh, uh, not only did he, they hold on to Peter, not only did they make a get in a hurry, uh, but they got to a place uh, that they had to make sure they could hear uh, what he had to say. Y'all didn't even catch it. Uh, you got to hear uh, what God has to say to you. Uh, and so they ran to the man uh, who had the power. They ran to the man uh, who had the understanding. Uh, they wanted to hear uh, what he had to say. And Peter 
reminded him, don't look at me. Don't look at John. Don't look on us. But you got to look on the one who's able to perform a miracle. I stopped by to remind somebody every now and then I got to hear what God has to say to my spirit, to my percocence, to my situation. Somebody ought to say yeah. Somebody ought to say yeah. Look at it. Look at it. Peter, Peter, help me. I'm about to close this thing out. Amen. Not only, not only did Peter in the text here reminds us that the man held on to Peter and John and the people got in a hurry and they needed to hear. Amen. But the Bible says in the end part of this verse, verse number 12, but the men, the men of Israel, why do you marvel at us? Why do you look so intently at us? Do you think it's by our own power, our own godliness? We have been made. This man to walk, do you think it was us? I'm here to remind somebody that in the midst of everything, it's not the man that did the miracle. It's the miracle that was in the man. Catch it. It wasn't a man that did the miracle. It's the miracle that was in the man. Y'all still didn't get it. It wasn't a man that did the miracle. It was a miracle in the man. And because there's a miracle in the man, there's a miracle in you. I am here to remind somebody that everything that I need, it comes from the Lord. Don't look on the individual. Don't look on the pastor. Don't look on the assistant pastor. Don't look at the preachers. Don't look at the stewards. Look to Jesus. He's able to fix it. Anybody need a miracle? Don't look to see where the miracle is. No that the miracle is in you. God is able to do exceedingly above anything that we ask. Somebody ought to say, yeah, I'm asking God. I'm seeking God. I'm knocking God. Only you can do it. There's a miracle in the works. Anybody here need God to do a miracle? Anybody here need God to hear your voice? Somebody say, yeah. Chat in a yeah. Somebody say, yeah. I know there's a miracle. I I know God is still doing it. I know he's working it out. Say yes. He's still working out miracles. He's still working out miracles. He's still working out miracles. Every now and then, as believers, we come across some challenges in life. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. So every now and then, as believers, we don't know how things work out. We don't even know how things are put together. We don't even know how God orchestrated it. Come on, somebody. That's what we call a miracle. And sometimes we look to individuals thinking that they're the ones who performed the miracle. But it wasn't about the individual. It's about Christ. I'm here to remind somebody as a story, as I recall, that sometimes people get caught up going to certain types of services where you can get your miracle. Miracle worship service. Deliverance services, I think they used to call them years ago, amen, and advertising them, sending, putting flyers out. That's before you had Facebook and social media. You put flyers all around the community. Prophet so-and-so, apostle somebody is coming, amen, evangelist is coming into town and meet us down at downtown at the hotel for a deliverance service, for a miracle service, amen? And make sure that you come, make sure you bring your money. Come on, somebody, amen? And I've, and I've been to a few of those services because I wanted to know what was going on. And in those services, you discover that the preacher, the minister, the evangelist, the apostle, the prophet, amen, always seemed to want to have a specific word for somebody, but they never identified who sometimes who the individual was. And even when they called you out of a room full of 500, 600,000 people, they that means that somebody in the group uh, may have a bad knee. Come on, somebody. If uh, somebody is in the room uh, and they declare that I'm speaking to the person on this side uh, who has a bad knee. Well, it was more hands that went up because they had a bad knee. Uh, anybody here ever had a bad knee uh, and you just happen to be in church that Sunday? Uh, that doesn't mean that God is speaking to your situation. Uh, it just means that they're trying to prostitute the word. Uh, I'm here to remind you that the miracle
miracle wasn't that the fact that the person called out somebody who had a bad knee or a bad heart or a stiff back or a messed up foot. I'm here to remind you it's not in the individual, but the miracle is already in you. Sometimes you got to get connected to the miracle worker. I'm here to remind somebody that I know a man who is a miracle worker. I know a man who can do much things. I'm here to remind you. And some of y'all trying to figure out what's the name of this sermon. I'm preaching about a miracle worker. I'm preaching about a miracle worker. The miracle worker is Jesus. I'm so glad he can use any vessel that he wants. He can use a Peter. He can use a John. He can use a preacher. He can use an evangelist. He can use a deacon. He can use a steward. He can use a trustee. He can use anybody in the church to perform a miracle. He's a miracle worker. Somebody ought to say, yeah, how do I know? I've seen him do it. I've seen him perform miracles. I've seen folk get up. I've seen folk get healed. It wasn't just my eyes, but in the Bible, he put hands on a blind man and the man could see he's a miracle worker I saw him feed 5,000 with a fish sandwich and a, and a meal I know he's a miracle worker I've seen him raise a young boy on a, on a stretcher who was dead and a widow in name I've seen a miracle I've seen him heal a woman that touched the hem of his garment I've seen our God do miracles day in and day out. He's a miracle worker. That's why I love him. That's why I praise him. That's why I preach about him. Somebody say yeah. Somebody say yeah. He's a miracle worker. He's a miracle worker. My God can do anything but fail. He's a miracle worker. And whatever vessel he wants to use to perform the miracle, it is all right with me. We've seen it too many times in scriptures. God has taken the foolish things and confounds the wise. God has taken those unexpected, not expecting a blessing, and used them to bring forth a miracle. He's taken some prophets, Dr. Max, and told a woman, you're out of money, and you're about to die, but go ahead and get some empty pots, and I'll show you a miracle that you might live and not die. I've seen him work miracles. The children of Israel cried out to God to save us. He sent his own Moses from the side of a mountain to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That's a miracle. Parting the Red Sea. The Bible's filled with miracles. And maybe today you need a miracle in your life through salvation, through healing, through deliverance. He's a miracle working God. And I know God can work it out on your behalf. If you're here, not saved, not sure about your salvation, and not clear about where you are today, maybe you just need a miracle in your life. You've been going through so much. Type in the chat, call the church at our number, amen, and we'll reach out back to you. And some minister or minister will pray with you and co connect with you. Want to rededicate your life today? Let us know, amen, and we will pray with you. If you need that miracle, our God is awesome. word that has gone forth like a two-edged sword that cuts Thank us you, God. and also heals us. Yes, God. Oh, Father, right now we're praying for the one who may not know you in the pardoning of their sin. Bless God. And God, we're praying, Lord, that even as you are pricking their heart by the power of your Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus, that they might say yes, that they might open up their heart right now and invite you to come into their heart and to be not only their Savior, but also Hallelujah, their Lord God. of their life. Thank you, Father. Oh, God, God, there may be someone here today who wants to rededicate their life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, God. Oh, God, help them to cry out to you right now and to ask you, Lord, to forgive them of all of their sins Yes, Father. Well and to rededicate their life to 
you, oh God. Thank you, God. Father, we thank you, Lord, because we know that you are a miracle-working God. Yes, you are, Father. So, Father, the one who stands in need of any type of miracle, let them reach their hands to heaven right Hallelujah, now. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. In the name, in the of, name Jesus. of Jesus. Yes, and God. God, we thank you for the testimonies, the testimonies. that shall come forth. Hallelujah, God. So we ask it in Jesus' mighty name. And the friends of God said, amen. amen. Amen, amen, amen. We praise the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Our praise type amen there in the chat. Amen. Thank you. Amen. And we thank God that he's a miracle thank worker. Thank and he's God. still doing miracles still in 2021. Miracles. Yes, amen. It used to be you're looking at a miracle. I think it was an old gospel song. Yes. Amen. I'm looking at a miracle. But we yes. thank God that he is still in the blessing business. Amen. Thank you so much for joining in worship with us here at Quinn Chapel AME Church. We thank you for tuning in. Amen. Social media, whatever platform you have joined us with this morning, we thank you. Again, we are still available to pray with you and touch and agree. Whatever your need is, whatever the miracle God needs to bring in your life, but the miracle's already in you through Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, uh, Dr. Max and uh, others who have shared in our worship experience today. To our tech team, thank you so much uh, for your skills and your uh, uh, due diligence and working thank to make sure that we have a, a quality program, a quality ministry opportunity for the people of God. Thank you, Elder Dwayne. Amen. Uh, for ministering in song this morning and all others who have shared in any aspect. We give God glory, honor, and praise. And now, with all hearts and minds are clear, amen, let us join hands across the church and now let us praise God from whom all blessings flow. And now unto him who's able and willing and desires to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before his throne of grace and mercy, is to the all-wise, the all-knowing, the all-giving God, who has reminded us this morning that he's a miracle worker. And may his joy, his peace, and the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit continue to rest with you and abide with you, henceforth, now, and forevermore. And now may the friends of God lift your voices on one accord and sing together. Church say and lift your voices and sing amen amen give the Lord a hand clap of praise have a wonderful week in the Lord God bless you thank you for joining in amen amen